Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is Reverend Essie and Friends on Micromana, our church online that we have every Sunday at 10 a.m. EST. You're welcome to join us. And if you're listening now, thank you. God bless you. And uh, we lift people up in prayer every Sunday, and not just on Sundays, every day. I would like to welcome you to New Birth Ministries Micromana on March 5th, 2016. God bless you. I'm going to open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I love you. Lord God, we are coming to you today. We all love you. We love you for being God all by yourself, for doing what you do for us. We love you, Father God, for being with us in the times we thought we were alone and no one else was with us. You were there. We thank you for that. We thank you for having the time for us. We thank you for giving us favor, especially when we don't even deserve to have favor, Father. We thank you. We love you. We want to thank you first. Before anything else, so many people are so busy looking for your hand that they, they forget and neglect to see your face, to look for your face, Father God, in your heart. We want to see your face and we want to see your heart today. We want you to be in us so when other people look at our faces, they'll see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We want to know the heart of God. We want to know the word of God. We want God's power. Whether we scream or whether we whisper, we want to have your power, Father God. We thank you for being God in us. We bless the God in us. We bless the God of the the creator of the universe, the God of the entire universe, the creator of all things. If not, there is nothing that was created that wasn't created by you. And, Lord, we lift our families up to you. We lift all those who are listening up to you right now. You know their needs. You know what is going on in each and every one of our lives. We are here today not just to represent the I, but to represent we, to represent the people who need and love you, Father God, the people who want to um, hear you in their lives, Father God. We represent those people, those that can speak, those that can talk to you, those that are afraid to talk to you, those that want to talk to you, those that want to hear from you. Father God, we ask right now that you enter within and and speak to their hearts so that they know that it was nobody but you. Show them what your voice sounds like. Let them hear you. You said, my sheep know my voice. And there are some out there, Father God, who want to know your voice. And we are praying right now, Father God, that they begin to, that they silence themselves long enough to allow you to speak to their hearts, to allow you to talk to them. Hallelujah. We're asking for special blessings in everybody's life this morning, Father. One, because you are God, the God of everything, and two, because you said we can have it. All we have to do is ASK, ask, seek, and knock. Whatever we ask for, you said you will give us the desires of our hearts. And, Father God, for those who are having a hard time knowing and realizing that you are within them and you are not within reach, you are there automatically already. Let them see that, Father God. I ask right now to allow people to see the power that is, that is within them that can cause all enemies to run, whether they ask for intercession or not. They have the power. Each and every one of us have the power to conquer, to conquer the wiles of the enemy and to conquer sometimes, even it, most of the times, even our own flesh, our own thoughts, our own minds. And, Father God, I ask that you use me today to uh, deliver this word. Wonderful, wonderful study I had with you, Father God. Uh, deliver it for me. Let your Holy Spirit enter in, in, inside of me and, and give us that which you would have us to know. In Jesus' holy name, amen <clears throat> and amen. God bless each and every one of you today. And uh, I want to speak today, and I, I don't know about the timing here, so let's, uh, let's have patience, right? Okay? So, you know, everything in the Bible is good. Like I say, Romans 8, 28, it's all good. Okay, but I'll be speaking today if you want to turn your Bible to uh, Genesis chapter 37. 
Genesis chapter 37, and I entitled this, Dare to Dream. Let me fix my computer here. Dare to Dream, folks. There are some of you out there who've had your dreams cut short. Some of you out there, as you grew up and got older, life got to you, um, and you lost hope. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. And some of you with the growing up and the adulthood and the changes that you went through in your life and, and all the other things that we go through, Um, you maybe got a little depressed in life and lost your drive and lost your vision. There's so many people out there who had excellent, wonderful visions. And either you lost your vision, I mean, between adulthood and paying bills and and relationship issues and children and grandchildren, great-grand issues, issues on your job, bank account, vehicles, houses, anything. There are so many. There is always something miserable that will take the place of something miserable, okay? <laughs> so remember that. For people who are out there wishing that they, all I want, I just want peace, okay? Um, it, it's not, the only way it's going to happen is if you have peace in Christ Jesus through his Holy Spirit. Okay, we are going to talk about here, uh, get to, put it that way, um, Joseph. Joseph the dreamer. I want to start out by asking you, are you a dreamer? Okay, where is your dreams? Do you still dream? Or are you, have you become afraid to dream? It costs too much. What is the cost of your dream that you would like to have, do, or be in your life? Do you realize that God is with you at all times? All right. God is in you. God in you. The Father, Jesus said in the Bible, the Father and I are one. Okay. He said I and the Father are one. Okay, and since Jesus said, I and the Father are one, we should say the same thing. He was our example, so you should say, the Father and I are one. There is nothing you don't do, nothing that you say that he doesn't see or help you with when you need help. Now, the word, let's start out with the Bible. The Bible is a book of various subjects that Shakespeare would wish to have been able to cover, although some have attempted to give him credit for writing it, okay? Um, I don't know if you've heard it or not, but um, if you look in Job 41.29, you will see the words shaking, and then you will see the word spear. And there are some scholars that say that the Bible, that's a hint that Shakespeare wrote the Bible, but I dare to challenge that fully with the difference being that the Holy Spirit arrives while reading the Bible. But he, but he fails to arrive while reading Shakespeare. There's a difference. Okay, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, the Word is God. The Word, Rhema, jumps out at you. That means the Word jumps out at you. And and, and has you can feel when you're reading the Word of God that there's something strong, there's something electrical, electrically charged. There's a power there that is different than reading any other book. Okay, that was Job forty-one twenty-nine. If you're taking notes, okay. But there are many lessons to be learned in our Bible: what to do, what not to do who, what, when, where, why, and how, they're all included. The story of Joseph, okay, the story of Joseph, what we have here is a favored man who just couldn't keep secrets to himself at the age of 17. Now, we know at the age of 17, there's still a young child. Well, not necessarily a child, but they're a young man. And some people at 17 still stay home with their parents, and some people at 17, like I did, went out on their own. I've been on my own since I was 17. Okay. Um, and, but still, you would think he would 
catch on and not tell his business to his brothers who hated him because he got favor from his father. God can show us things at times that we aren't supposed to repeat. It's called discretion, keeping things to yourselves. Um, You may have heard me preaching before on some sermons and lessons that I've done before where God showed me things that nobody else was supposed to know. It was personal between him and me. And I went and told the business and lost out on that favor, okay, by repeating something that was just supposed to be. Sometimes God will show you something that that will bless you. And it's unusual. It's unusual to man. It's, it's an unusual way that you should acquire a, a thing, okay? But God will open up a door for you, and, and it's just between, just between you and him. But the first time you go out and tell somebody else, you can lose your favor. You could lose that blessing because you told somebody it wasn't even, you added somebody in the equation that wasn't even supposed to be in there. All right. Um, now, I'm, I'm going to start out with a little facts and figures check, okay? Um, Joseph, Joseph's father, okay, Jacob, was known to be a swindler, a deceiver, and we could say a dreamer, okay? But at times, he did too much to get his dreams, okay? We'll say it that way. All right, uh, he did too much. He went too far to get his dream. Uh, we could call it ambition, I guess, if we want to call it ambition. All right, um, even when he was, him and his twin brother, when they were coming out of their mother's womb, Jacob grabbed the heel of his brother, his brother's foot coming out of the womb. He's grabbing his heel. He was at it then, even as a baby, Okay. Uh, Genesis twenty seven thirty five. If you want to write that down, okay. Um, cleverly, but, but I have to add on to that. With the help of his mother, he stole his brother's birthright. Okay, his father was blind and wanted to bless his brother Esau, but his brother Esau was a hunter, and he had to go hunting first to get the venison to make the special soup that his father wanted. And while Esau was gone, Jacob Esau, while Esau was gone, his own mother helped his brother to steal his birthright. Okay, now everybody blames that on Jacob, but if you go to the verse, you will see that actually his mother helped him to steal his brother's uh, birthright. Okay, and a lot of people don't see that, okay? They, they talk about Jacob, Jacob did this and Jacob did that. Okay, they, we understand that Jacob was a swindler. All right, let's go back to uh, Genesis 27, if you're in your Bibles with me. Go back to Genesis 27, okay? And when you're reading, um, it says, And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his his eldest son, and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out in the field and take me some venison and make that savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die." And Rebecca, okay, are you noticing this? Rebecca, the wife, uh, the mother, heard when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. And Esau went into the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And, and Rebecca spoke unto Jacob, her son, her other son, okay. Obviously, Jacob was her favorite as well, okay. And she said, Behold, I heard your father speak unto Esau, your brother, saying, now she's gossiping. She's telling one son something that he shouldn't even know. He wasn't even there. Okay, she's telling what she heard her husband say to 
his other brother. He said, bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. And now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me um, from thence two good kids of goats, and I will make savory meat for thy father such as he loveth. Now, mom was crooked. Let, okay, to be honest, okay, let's be honest about it. Mom was, <laughs> mom was crooked. Okay, she took the ble- she helped to take the blessings from one son and give it to her favorite son, obviously. And and Jacob in verse eleven it says, and Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, listen to listen. Now everybody said Jacob was this and Jacob was a swindler. He was deceptive. Way well, Cave was so he was he put his way. Jacob was crafty, but his mom was slick. And so Jacob said to his mother, okay, behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I'm a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. See, he's telling his mother right there, Dad, he's going to think I'm a deceiver. He's, going to, he's, he's not going to trust me. He's going to think I'm a deceiver, and, and, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. Now, we have to say here, Jacob did try. Did he or did he not? Jacob did try, but his mom was deceptive, and she went on with it, and it happened, and he got blessed instead of his brother, and his brother was upset. Okay? His brother was, his, his brother was so upset that he wanted to kill him. He saw 2741. In chapter 27, verse 41, it says, And Esau hated Jacob. See, these things that people, when people uh, do things against you, okay, sometimes it, it makes you very, very upset. And, and if you let the devil in, you can actually begin to hate someone. This is what God does not want us to do. This is why Jesus tells us to forgive people. Because once hatred enters in, you, could be, you be, become, quickly become a murderer. Okay, even some people don't murder physically. They, they uh, uh, murder someone's character, all right, and evil enters in and takes over. 41 says, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. And he said, then will I slay my brother Jacob. So Esau is saying, when daddy dies, I'm going to get you, Jacob. Esau had that much respect for his father, okay? So, Esau, uh, Esau was angry, and so Jacob, he left. Jacob knew his brother was angry. Jacob, a little fear began to enter. Now, see, he did all of this evil, him and his mom, okay, and all of a sudden, fear enters in. When you do something you have no business doing, fear will, will enter in, and you will take flight where you are not supposed to st- take flight, but you are supposed to stand your ground instead. Jacob left. Uh, he lived in fear of repercussion or consequences. How many times have we done things in our lives and not thought of consequences? I think of even my own children. How many times, you know, have your own family, people that you love and see, and people that you love and know, how many times have you seen them do something and not think about the consequences? They don't think about what's going to happen after they do that thing. Okay? And, and see, all this happened because Jacob uh, wanted something, okay? His mother, mainly in him, wanted something that belonged to somebody else. You know, some people will do anything to get their dream. Do you know anybody like that? They'll step on folks. They'll break hearts. They'll lie, cheat, steal, slander. They'll do anything to get their dream. And what, 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 what a lot of people don't realize is when you go on to read these, these stories about Jacob and Joseph, you will see that they already had favor on them, favor from the Father, from the fathers. We'll say it that way. And, and put it, think of it spiritually, favor. We have favor from our Father. We don't have to lie, cheat, and steal, and, 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 and uh, slander and, and murder somebody's character to get what we want. So Jacob Lee searches for a wife at Laban's camp. He liked Rachel, okay, but he got tricked into sleeping with her sister Leah, 
Okay, here we go. Because speaking of consequences, okay, so he had to work more years, double time, for the one that he wanted, for Rachel. And then we know Jacob saw the ladder. Okay, there's even songs in, in, in Sunday school. I don't know if you guys sang it or not, but there's a song about uh, we are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. I don't know if you remember that song, Jacob's ladder. And then we know about how Jacob wrestled with an angel. Seems like all his life Jacob's wrestling with something, okay? And he had children. And now he has Joseph. So let's get on to Joseph, okay? Jacob favored Joseph because he had him when he was an old man. Now, some people would say that's fleshly pride, okay? He was, he was fleshly proud. He was proud of his son that he had because he was old at the time. You know, most people, when they're old, they're not expecting to have a child, and we've got to remember, back in these days, this is Genesis, back in these days, people lived extremely long, okay? <laughs> they lived extremely long. And, and he was proud that he had a son in his old age. I, I call it the peacock syndrome. He's strutting around. Just imagine a peacock strutting around and showing off, okay? Now, here is a math equation for you. Favoritism plus showing off equals envy. Think about it. Favoritism is cool. If somebody loves you and they favor you, that's good. You thank God for that and, you know, you take the blessings and, 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 and thank him. But when you start showing off, you're going to attract some envy to you. And a lot of times people, as, as human beings, not just certain people, okay, so I, I don't want to go there and say, well, you know, oh, yeah, so-and-so does that. Yeah, We've we got to watch blaming somebody else because sometimes it's, it's everybody and you're trying to lay blame on one or two, three, four, five people, okay? But favoritism plus showing off equals envy. Hey, people, you ever see somebody with that, look at me, look at me. I am all that. Look at me. I have favor with daddy. Daddy loves me. And, you know, even in this <laughs> He was speaking in a Christian world, okay, speaking of spiritual, spiritually speaking, it, it, don't Christians do the same thing? God loves me more than he loves you. Don't you wish that you had what I had? Look, what I have, look, I have favor. And, and this is what happens. And when people start doing that, they're, it's the peacock syndrome. They're showing off. They're showing their plumes. Okay, oh, speaking of plumes, Joseph's, <laughs> oh, my, Joseph's coat, multi, what do you call it, the technicolored coat. He even had a, a, a peacock coat, my, 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 okay, I never thought about that just now. He even had a technicolored coat, a peacock coat, stride, strutting around, pride. His dad made him a special coat, okay, he was so favored. My, my, there's something to that. Uh, God is showing us that, that he had that special multicolored coat, okay? Um, 17, now, the Bible says that he was 17 years old. Now, look, when you're 17, when you're 17 years old, you know better. You know what you're doing. You could try to act as innocent as you would like to act. You know what you're doing. There are women that had babies at the age of 11, 12, and 13 and became good mothers. Not that I'm advocating that at all, okay, but it happens. And by the time it's five, uh, five years later when you're 17, you know exactly what you're doing. So you tell me why Joseph was going telling. Now, the Bible already says his brothers hated him. He had favor. His dad made him a peacock coat, okay, the multicolored, technicolor coat. They already didn't like him. Now, he had to know this at the age of 17. So he had this special dream, okay? He should have unless he now, unless he was the kind of person he was over-trusting. Maybe his brothers made fun of him and talked about him or whatever, cap jokes on him or whatever. But, and, and he said, well, uh, I, but I still trust him. They're my brothers. And I, I'm, I don't know. I don't think he did, okay? An envious person can be working against you, okay? His brothers hated him to start out with. They, the last thing they wanted to hear is about this dream that he had, okay, about everybody bowing down to him and worshiping him. 
that is the last. See, what I say about discretion, when God, there's things God shows you, you cannot tell other people. They don't want to know that they're going to be serving you one day or listening to you preach. There's some of you out there, and you know who I'm talking to. Okay, there's some of you out there, you got a call on you to preach. Some of you out there got a call on you to teach, to sing, to play, to do whatever you want to do, to do whatever your heart desires for the kingdom. And there are some folks out there that don't like that. So you can't tell all of your business. Just work at it. Work on it, okay? And um, and then people, every, there is even people who will be working against you uh, in the background, okay, the envy. This envy and jealousy will do this, okay? Two-faced folks will work against you, and they'll call you every now and then. They're working against you. They're doing their little private prayers, okay, what they call, quote, unquote, intercession. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then they call you to see if it's working. Some people are so bold, they'll call you to see if it's working. Okay, I know some people who are working both sides of the board as well. Okay, and I even know some who call and check to see if it's working. Did you ever have anybody call you out the blue? That's nice to call you. You know, you're talking to them, having a nice conversation, but the questions that they ask you are just a little off kilter. <laughs> okay, you just God gives you discernment. You can discern something not right in a phone call. For instance, like a plant. Okay, let's say somebody gives you a plant. Okay, and you. You kind of notice something between you and this person, but you're trying to be nice to them and everything. Okay, so you take the plant. And then a few months later, they call and they, and they hey, how you doing? How's that plant doing? And meanwhile, the plant's dying. But you don't want to tell them that because you kind of felt funny about them in the first place. <laughs> All right? All right, you know, that's your cue. That's your hint that something is wrong, especially if they don't say it in a loving way, but they say it in like a sly way, like they want to hear your answer. There are some people like it. They're cunning. All right, so what do you do? You say, oh, it's good. It's good. All right, and it, you know it's not. Anywho, all right, Joseph dreamed a dream and told it to his family. He said, the sun and the moon and the stars worshipped me. So his family got mad. And even his dad cracked a joke about it and said, well, I bow and worship you as well. No, he got favor from his dad. And he's telling his dream, and even his dad cracked a joke about it, which goes to show you can't tell everything that God has shown you, no matter who it is. All right? Joseph in his technicolor coat had gone too far. His, the Bible says his brothers even hate, hated him even more. This is about man's jealousy. Okay? This is about man's jealousy. Man is, people are jealous of one another. They will be jealous of you, and they don't want to hear anything good. Let's go to Genesis 37. All right. I'll, I'll read Genesis 37. I'll read verses 5 to 10 real quick. And it says, and Joseph dreamed a dream, and he did. Joseph the dreamer, okay. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were being sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood up right and behind your sheaves stood round about and made obedience, um, obedience to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams, see, and for his words. There are people that will hate you for your words, the way that you speak, the things that you say. And here the devil is trying to tell you people don't want to hear you right now. It's not your time. Okay. And people don't want to hear your voice. They don't want to hear your words. I remember Joyce Meyer even said one time that she, she didn't like her, couldn't stand her voice. Me, myself, I, I don't like my voice either. There's just some people don't like their voice, okay? But, there are, but when God tells you to speak, you speak. But whenever you're not supposed to, keep, that, look, keep it to yourself, all right? He says they even hated him for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and he told it to his brethren. And he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him 
the man he got favor from, the man that gave him the peacock coat, his father rebuked him and said, unto him, look, when you get so bad that the person that's supposed to love you is upset with you, something's wrong. Not, not bad. Not when, I don't mean when you get so bad, but when, when you're on this so much, okay, sometimes God can show us something. Sometimes God can bless us with something. We can't tell other people, <clears throat> okay? You get so excited, you want to tell everybody, everybody, just like you did when you first got saved. When you first got saved and got Jesus in your heart and got Jesus in, and, and the Holy Spirit in you and you might have spoken in a little tongues or something, you, you wanted to tell the world, you want to tell everybody, but there's time to, to everything there is a season, okay? What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow ourselves to see uh, to thee to the earth? See, even his family, his father, got upset about this dream. Okay? Um, when you know someone is jealous, speaking of his brothers here, don't share goodness with them. Speak generally with them, but don't tell all your business. When you know some, the <clears throat> Joseph already knew. His brothers had hatred times two or three by now for him. Don't tell him. Don't tell them the dream. Okay, he would have did better to do like David and sit on a mountain somewhere, okay, like the shepherd, sit on a mountain somewhere and speak to God about it, okay? Um, Number one, people would not think about this when I say this, okay? People would not get jealous of you if they didn't think that it was true. There's something about you, and they know it. Sometimes other people can see something in you that you haven't seen in yourself yet. Think about it. Why are they jealous of you? What did did David say in the Bible? He said, uh, people, I'm hated without a cause. Why do people hate me? What did I do? Amen. Why are they jealous of you? And number two, they know that you're anointed. Sometimes other people can see the anointing in you, and you haven't seen it yet. You can't, just can't seem to see it. You just, I don't know. I don't know what people see in me. I don't know why people get upset with me. Okay, let's stop that. <laughs> people get upset with you because they see the anointing on you. They see the blessing in you. All right? Amen. Now, I don't know. If some of you, I love Christian movies, and I bought the movie King David, um, Nathan Parker. Yeah, I love King David so much. I even know that I love Nathan Parker. I love the, the, the man that played David in that movie. But uh, Saul, King Saul, I love his character too. I see him in a lot of movies. But the man that played King Saul, he said, Saul said King David was like a, uh, he was like a pimple scratching at his heart. I don't know if some of you saw that movie, but this is what it's like. This is what you are like to the enemy. You are like a temple scratching at his heart. He hates you. Okay, people know that you are anointed. Now, this doesn't, the enemy knows you're anointed. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're the cutest, which some people think they are, or you're the richest which some people think they are, you are anointed. There are people that are cuter than you, okay? There's people cuter than us. And there's people that are richer than us. But they lack that holy anointing. All right? You're like a pimple scratching at their hearts. And all of his favoritism, had Joseph become a show-off? per se. After all, his dad wanted him to be the better one, okay? It makes you wonder, thinking about Jacob, Jacob to JJ, going from Jacob to Joseph, is it a generational curse? We don't know, okay? We shouldn't fight for our blessings. God has enough to spit. Look, God has enough to spare. Don't fight for your blessings, If you don't get one thing at a certain time, trust God that you'll get it at a different time. Don't fight for your blessings. Did you you notice that Isaac ran out of blessings for his son? 
Okay, think about why Esau got mad. Because his, his brother, Jacob, stole his blessings. And, and, and it, they're speaking in the Bible about this, like there's no, oh, my goodness, there's nothing left. <gasps> okay, J- Jacob got it all. So what is Esau supposed to do? Okay, Isaac might have run out of blessings, but guess who doesn't? Your dad doesn't. Jacob's dad ran out of blessings, but your dad doesn't. Baruch and not bless the Lord. Blessing. He loves to be blessed. You bless God, God will bless you. That is the difference between man and God. Okay? So verse, uh, chapter 37, verse 19. Okay, and this is what they do to us as Christians also. Um, mockery. Okay, you know, God even showed me in a dream the other night about mockery. There was a spirit uh, that looked like a shape, it looked like a woman, that followed a friend of mine around. And I loved my friend. I don't even, I think it was a female. I, I mean, when God showed me things in my dreams, I, I interpret dreams only when he tells me to. But a friend of mine, I love my friend. I saw myself in my dream with this person, but there was a woman that followed her around and, and aggravated her and mocked her and mockery. This is what the devil does to you. He makes fun of you, and he sends people. If your surrounding doesn't aggravate you somehow, he'll send people to mock you and make fun of you. <clears throat> they mocked him. They said, the, oh, here comes the dreamer. Verse 37, uh, uh, cha- uh, I mean, chapter 37, verse 19, and they said, to him, wait, I'll start with 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. These people don't like you. They'll conspire to kill you. Some of you have been called into ministry, and there are people right now that are so jealous of you that they already made your name look bad so nobody will sign up for you and help you in ministry. Oh, that's a word for somebody. Who? And anywho, all right. It's, even before they, even before he came close, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, "Behold, the dreamer cometh. This dreamer cometh. Here he comes. Here comes the dreamer. Again, okay, they're making fun of him now. Okay, mocking him. It's a mock. They are full of the devil." That's exactly what it is. They're full of, they have open doors, and they're full of the devil, and they're making fun of their brother <clears throat> who was ordained in life to do greater things, and little did they realize. All right? They conspired to kill Joseph, and your enemy does the same thing to you. And this is a note to Satanists and Luciferians. The devil does not like you either. <laughs> All those people that are worshiping him and killing folks for him and killing babies and sacrificing and blood sacrifice, guess what? He doesn't like you either. And at that great white throne judgment, they're going to find out, well, we thought we had favor with you, Satan. And Satan's going to say, I hated you too. Fools, they're fools. There's no favoritism there. He'll sift you as wheat and burn you up. Okay? Now, what they did to Joseph was, that what they did to, what the brothers did to their brother, Genesis uh, 37, 23, it says, And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped him of his coat. This is what they'll do to you too, uh, the, the jealous folks. They'll strip you. Watch. Don't let them. Look, listen to this. Don't let them do this to you. They stripped him of his coat, his coat of many colors that was, on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit. Well, there was no water in it, it says. Uh, they just put him into a pit. And watch this. Jesus. After they do this to you, they will sit down and break bread. That's a word for somebody. After somebody strips you of your, your beautiful coat, after somebody strips you of your favoritism, after somebody steals your right, oh, gracious, mama, after you, after you, I hate to say it this way, but after you let, quote, unquote, after you let, after you allow someone to do this to you, they'll strip it from you. You know, I've heard preachers say before that when God calls you to do something, you better go ahead and do that thing and do it with all your might. Do it as as, as unto the Lord, because if you don't do it, 
somebody else will. They'll step in and, and they will. Check this out. After they put him down in the pit, they sat down and broke bread. They were communing. Broke bread over him. They start to eat. Okay? And after they took his coat, they they dipped it in animal blood. And then they saw, they took this beautiful covering, this beautiful coat, <clears throat> and dipped it in blood. It's not the blood of Jesus now. Oh, speaking, my God, my God, speaking of blood sacrifices. Ooh. Jesus, the things that the enemy will do to try to get to you. You would be surprised as the, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All of you out there with the anointing on you and with ministries, you will be surprised as the people that are dipping you in blood that is not worthy. That's a word. Hallelujah. Your enemy is dipping your mantle. There's somebody out there, I don't know who you are, but God is telling you today the enemy is dipping your mantle in blood because you are allowing them to. You opened up the gate for them to be able to do it. Somebody out there, you need to fast and pray. I I don't even know where I was at. I stopped. I, I don't. That was from God. That was for somebody. Who they sold him for 20 pieces of silver, and to Egypt he went. Okay? They trashed his gift. There's somebody out there who is trashing your gift. Or there's somebody out there who is not, maybe not trashing, but somebody who is attempting to trash your gift. That's a word. That's a word. So anyhow, Joseph got into human trafficking. We'll call it like it is today. He got into human trafficking. What a testimony. Wow, wow, wow. So <clears throat> they, they took the coat back. They sent him to the hum, human traffickers. He didn't care, could care less. Enemy could care less about what happens to you. And then they took the coat back. Watch us to their parents. What a thing. Look. I know nowadays, did you ever notice that generations nowadays have, they're, they're losing respect for their parents? You know, I remember back in the day, look, people can act like this didn't happen to them all they want to, but I'm not a greater than thou preacher, all right? But I remember back in the day where we didn't even want to drink or smoke in front of our parents. How many of y'all out there listening to this, okay, tried your first cigarette and ran outside behind the bush or did it in school? I know people that start smoking cigarettes and they could smoke in their apartments and could not smoke in the presence of their parents. Watch what these folks did to their parents. They took Joseph, they took their brother's coat back dipped in blood and and told their parents that he was dead. That is the result of sin. <clears throat> Insensitiveness, no feelings, could care less. They could care less about how their parents felt about it. I'm sure they were all. See, when people are doing this, when they're deceptive and they're in sin, they'll do anything. They don't care about somebody's feelings. Forget you and the horse you rode in on. Did you ever hear anybody say that? That's how they feel. And this is how they were treating their parents. Desperation will do anything. That's a result of sin. A desperate person will tell a lie on you to make you look bad to people in power. Listen, watch it. Desperation will tell a lie on you, comma, to make you look bad, comma, to people in power. Think about that. They'll say that you're powerless, don't spend any time on her. Don't spend any time on him. They're, <laughs> they're powerless. They're dead. Look at me. I have more than them. I'm better than them. I'm higher. I'm greater than them. Don't spend any time on them. They're not needed. Simply put, you aggravate them. You aggravate them. They'll say, oh, so-and-so, oh, don't spend any time on them. They're not worth it. They lack effort. They lack desire. They lack the desire to dream. Oh, my God. They will tell people that can help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who will tell people that can help you in life that you lack the desire to dream. 
There's been somebody out there, some of you know what I'm talking about. Somebody told somebody that you needed in life that could help you not to spend any time on you because you lack the desire to dream. You're not as as, as, uh, good as them. My, my. Joseph was special. Okay. He now we're in Egypt now, okay? We're in Egypt. Joseph's in Egypt now. Okay, and everybody can see that Joseph here we go. Now he's in Egypt. Egypt is a place of what? Slavery. Egypt is a place you don't want to go to in your life speaking spiritually. You don't want to be enslaved. Egypt is a place of sin. So here we are, <clears throat> Joseph's in Egypt. He was full of wisdom. And he interpreted dreams, and some say he had divining powers. But we look in verse 44, uh, I mean, chapter 44, verse 5. Let me go. Chapter 44, verse 5. And people, I think people get that wrong. Uh, 44, verse 5. I believe I'm in the right one. Um, oh, yes, if I get to the right chapter, it would help. Okay, it says, is not, <clears throat> is not this... It, we're speaking of the cup now that he blamed his uh, family for taking, is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing. Okay, this is when his family, okay, uh, this is when um, Egypt was in drought, okay, and Joseph had all of the food, and people had to come to Joseph for food. And his father sent his brothers to him to get food, and they didn't even know who he was. Didn't even know who he was. Some of you out there, God has changed you so much that the people that you least expected to come to you will come to you needing something. The ones that dogged you will come to you needing something, whether it's food or whether it's money or whether it's a word or prayer. Okay, so Joseph, okay, he interpreted dreams. He ended up in Potiphar's house, who was an officer of the Pharaoh. Okay, watch this. Joseph had favor everywhere he went. He ends up in, but now he was in, how do you go from, (laughs) only God, how can you go from human trafficking to being um, in the house of the officer of the Pharaoh of the country of the land? Joseph saw grace in his sight, served him until Potiphar's wife began to lust for him and blamed him for attempting to rape her. And in running away, see, there's times where you're going to have to run away from the enemy. You just leave, flee, go, get, get going, okay? And in and, and running away from this woman who kept putting advances on him, he left his garment. He actually ran out of his garment trying to get away from this woman. Joseph respected the man's wife so much. He ran. What would they do nowadays? They would lay down with her and take her to bed and, and, and attempt to keep it a secret. Joseph ran. She had his garment in her hand, so now she has proof, okay? No matter what proof people think they have on you uh, or proof that they made up on you, okay, made up proof if that makes any sense, okay, do anything to get away, run. Okay, so here we go. To prison he went. Okay, now Joseph's in prison. He goes through something else again. What we went through, um, mess, he went through mess with his family. He got into, he got into um, human trafficking. Now he's in prison for years. When you're reading the Bible, these things have gone on for years. But, even, but God even gave him favor in prison. God will give you favor in prison. Some of you, are, um, you suffer anxiety. You're in your prison, no matter what it's for, okay? You suffer anxiety, but know this, God still has favor in your life on you. He exercised his talent in prison. He interpreted dreams. He saved the butler. The baker uh, got hanged, but yet the butler 
lived, but forgot about Joseph. He forgot Joseph helped him and went about his life as years went by, talking about ingratitude. So that goes to show that some things you do for people, you can help somebody and save them from death, and they'll have ingratitude. Just don't even worry about this. Keep on walking. There's other people, not just that person. Keep it going, all right? No matter where we go, God gives us favor. We have favor of the Father. No matter what set we're in, no matter what country we're in, no matter what we're doing in life, we have favor of the Father always. No matter who likes it or not, be all be it your family, okay, you have favor with the Father. Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. And watch this. This is how, how the story ends. Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. Now, we're not talking about Potiphar. We're talking about the Pharaoh of Egypt. He figures that favor. He's interpreting Pharaoh's dreams. He gained favor with Pharaoh and became a governor in the land. He had all power except in the throne. Who's that remind you of? You. Jesus is in the throne, and he gave you all other power. You have power over, through the blood of Jesus. You have power through the Holy Ghost. You have power through God, the creator. You have power. In the name of Jesus, you have power. Be, start exercising it. Rightly so. All right? And verse 39, I will read. Okay? We're talking about discretion here as well. Learning to keep things to yourself. Okay, the art of being discreet. Okay, the king says Joseph was discreet. Okay, he, he kept things so he didn't tell all of this business. Okay, and the king saw it. Just like I said, when God does something for you and helps you in life, don't tell everything. Keep it between you and him. That's your relationship. It ain't everybody else's relationship. They ain't telling you what he told them, so what are you telling everybody else what he told you for Pharaoh rewarded Joseph with a ring and gave him power over all the land. The drought came, rations began. And I was telling you about how his family came and didn't even realize after all these years, they're asking him, they're asking the dreamer for food. No, they weren't supposed to ask the dreamer for food. Here cometh the dreamer, right? Didn't even know who he was. Asking the dreamer for food. He set him up to be caught of stealing his divining cup. Now, I don't know. I don't really think that uh, Joseph was divining here. We've got to remember that Joseph was in Egypt, and that's the kind of things that they exercised in Egypt. He told, I believe Joseph told his worker, okay, his helper, to tell them, isn't this the – he put the cup in their, in their corn, in, in their uh, seed, in their, in their food, okay, and he did it on purpose and set them up so that they will be caught with this diviner's cup and have to come back to him. He just, he put a, he's instilling just a little tad bit of fear in him, you know, just a little bit, okay, he was exercising his authority, I should say. Okay, so I don't believe he was really divining. Okay, we'll look at uh, chapter 44, you'll see, if you want to write that down, chapter 44. Uh, verse 5 is when they're talking about the diviner's cup. I don't believe because Israel didn't get into all that kind of stuff, but Egypt did. So I think that you know, some people say Joseph was a diviner. No, he wasn't. Uh, I don't believe he was. Okay. And he broke the news to them of who he was whenever they brought them back. And he told them that that was the cup. They, they made them look like they stole something so they'd have to come back. And when they came back, he broke the news to them. And, and guess what? He told them who he was. I am your brother. I am the son. But he forgave them, which is awesome. This is what you have to do. Whoever is against you, forgive them. And they all lived happily ever after, and nobody starved. Okay, <laughs> all right? All right, learn to forgive. I know there's some people out there that are really, really did you wrong. Let it go because bitterness eats like cancer. I tell everybody that I believe some people are sick today because they can't forgive. I, I know somebody who, who is mad at their relative, and they are so upset with this relative, and this is the honest truth, I'm telling you. I know them personally. There's somebody that is so upset with their relative that as the years go by, the relative doesn't get sick. 
they do. They're going through a lot of stuff in their life. They're gaining weight. They're unhealthy. They look bad. Bags under their eyes, hair falling out. They don't. And I truly believe that unforgiveness and bitterness is making them sick. Don't you be one of those people, okay? Forgive. Because your Father in heaven has forgiven you of things. Remember those things you did? Think of some of the things you did you didn't want anybody else to know about. God forgave you. All right? So this is a story of the power of forgiveness. Remember, too, that in reading one story, that certain story took years to transpire. These aren't fairy tales, and neither is your life. Your life is not a fairy tale. So I say to you, have discretion. In fact, let me look up the word discretion before I end this. I'm, I'm actually done. And discretion. It says, um, discretion has the meaning of acting on one's own authority and judgment. In law, discretion as to legal rulings, such as whether evidence is excluded as a trial, may be exercised by a judge. Some view discretion negatively, while some view it positively. Discretion is at all levels of law enforcement. Discretion is knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it, what's right, what's wrong. That's discretion. So I end this by saying to you, and I am through, dream on, dreamer. Dream on. God has favor on you. Everywhere you go, no matter what situation that you get into, God has favor on you, and people know it. So if there's anybody out there that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, now would be the time. Now would be the time. Don't wait. He's waiting for you. He's not mad at you. He's not hurling thunderbolts and lightning at you, and you have to duck. And Jesus is not mad at you no matter what you did. There is nothing that Jesus will not forgive you for. Just ask him, Lord, forgive me. Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, forgive me of my sins. I am so sorry for the things I did. Forgive me, Jesus, and be my Lord. Be my teacher and my guide. Start me all over. Make me clean. Purge me with hyssop. Make me new. Cause me to spiritually be white as snow. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my mind. Start me over. Cause me to realize your power that I now have in me because of your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Amen. And if you said that prayer, yes, is that easy? Welcome to the family of God. I applaud you. God bless you. Go find a Bible-believing, tongue-talking church that will teach you correctly All right, and learn of him. Always remember, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. If you have to get in contact with me, I'm Rev. Essie at me.com, or you can see me at Esther R. Scott on Facebook and blah, blah. I'm all over the place, so hey, I'll be easy to contact. God bless you. Have a good day.